What's up guys, it's Manga Time once again, and I'm here today to bring you Bleach 550, uh, Blazing Bullets. Uh, this is a really great chapter, for me, because I love the Sturmitter. Um, I'm more excited to see them than I am the majority of the captains anyway, frankly, and just for them to get more panel time is great in my opinion, because, you know, it's it, it's just great to see more of them, and this chapter really brings that home. <laughs> um, so it starts off... I'm really happy, actually, we see this, because we, we've we been seeing Basby and BG9's fights now for the last two weeks. So it's good to see another battle, even though you don't really see a lot of it. Uh, and it's Muri versus Sturmitter D. Askin Naklavar. And basically, Naklavar is kind of interesting, because he's, he's, he is quite flamboyant and comical. Um, but I, I really think he's sarcastic and really shady as well. Uh, he strikes me as one of the more intelligent of the Sturmitter, anyway. And it starts off with him kind of framing Miyuri and Nimu like that. So I'm really, really intrigued to find out what his abilities actually in, uh, include. Because we've all kind of theorised that he's the dimension or the door or something like that because he seemed to open a portal uh, back in 543. But uh, um, he kind of alludes to possibly not having an ability like that simply because, um, in my opinion, it doesn't really sound like that is or at least his only ability anyway. So he deduces just apparently by doing that that uh, it's going to take too long against Miri, whatever this is. Um, and Miri, you know, Askin basically says, I'm giving up. And Miri's like, well, what does that mean that it's going to take time? And Askin says that he's going to have to try and find different patterns to get Miri to die. Interesting, what the hell does that mean? Um, and basically, Askin's really bad at all these kind of little things. He just, he just wants to get it over and done with straight away. So... That kind of implies that when Askin fights someone, they usually die pretty quickly, but obviously Miyuri's a bit difficult, he's a bit tri uh, trippy. However, of course, it all, could all be a little bit of a lie by Askin, because he then says, just go fight someone else, I'll see you later, and he, he seems to walk off. However, he then stops, and he says, he turns around and says, aren't you going to come after me? And Miyuri's like, no, feel free to leave. Um, and it's really cool, because you get a vision of the ba battleground, and basically, there's loads of pillars, a bit like a forest, um, and it's just darkness outside, outside of this little ring of light. Okay, and that's important, I think, because Askin wants Miri to walk into the shadows, I believe. Miri says, I want some time to analyse your Oyatsu, or maybe you're trying to provoke me because you want me to step into your territory. This apparently seems to be right, as Askin says, how scary, because I'm glad I haven't shown you my powers yet. Uh, and then the massive Oyatsu surge happens, and it's Soifong, uh, and, and they all believe that she was able to defeat her, her enemy without her Bankai. Um, and then Askin says something that's actually a little confusing, um, he says, so, the, it was right, the captains who had their bank I stole and were able to master different ways to fight without having to use it, all in a short amount of time, as His Majesty expected. So, as usual, Yohar Vark is very genre savvy, he's very aware of the fact that the Shinigami were going to try and learn more powerful things when they lost their Bankai. So, yeah, um, so, he, he, Yohar Vark proves himself once again to be an awesome villain, in that he's ready for anything. Um... And, you know, once again, he literally is just a villain who stays on top of things. And it's crazy because this is kind of weird because I'm not entirely sure who's talking here. I think it's Miuri who says, I'm sure you understand the meaning of your words. You said he expected so. In fact, yes, it is Miuri because then Askin replies, yes, it means that you are indeed powerful. And he has a bit of a shady look in his eyes. Now, what the hell does that mean? Well, is he taking the mick? Because it is, ba uh, it is asking, and he is, a, he is a bit like that. Um, I don't know, it's really kind of hard to say. Um, asking, I don't know what he's up to. I, I really want to know his powers. Um, I, I would just love to, to see a bit more of him. However, we go back to Baz, and there's a pretty amazing picture, actually, where he just melts the ice that... Uh, it apparently impaled him into the wall. Um, it looks really cool, and he steps free. And he looks pretty cool, actually, Baz. But uh, now that we're starting to see him a bit more, he's coming into his own design a bit. Um, he looks pretty cool. Uh, and yes, it is. Uh, it does appear that a, a lot of people got called this right. He wasn't stabbed at all by Hitsugaya's ice. It literally kind of just pushed him up against the wall. So obviously all the, all the uh, Shinigami are like, oh no, wasn't he just slashed? Uh, Matt Smiley is looking pretty shocked as well. Basby says, my mantle was ruined, Look, my sturmator is ruined, my sturmator uniform was ruined, and he pulls off his cloak. And I have to say that Basby looks really cool, actually. 
Uh, his design is awesome. He's got like a little necklace on. He's got these black bands around his arms. Um, and he just looks really cool, I think. Um, that picture where he's pulling off his uh, coat is awesome. I think he looks really cool. Um, and then it cuts over to Soifon. And we see that she does indeed have her Suzumi Bachi strapped to her back. Um, she is still walking away from the end of the last chapter. And BG9 fires one of his tendrils at her. And this is really cool. She leaps up above it, grabs the tendril, swings it round and sends BG9 flying into a building. She then says, are you still breathing, you monster? BG9 emerges from the dust um, without his cloak on. And we see what he, his true form looks like. And this is really kind of interesting. Um, basically, he, he's uh, pretty much confirmed either a robot or a cyborg. I'm more inclined to go for a cyborg, I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, and basically, he is just a, a lot of kind of strips of something or other kind of put together, I think. Um, we see he kind of has like some kind of armour across his chest and uh, his waist and his... Um, forearms, which you see, we see what that does in a minute. And BG9 replies, I have never breathed. And Soifon just basically says, what we're all thinking, are you a robot? Kuritsuchi would be very happy to meet you. That's kind of cool. Um, and then BG9 reveals what, like, his body can do. Um, and the kind of, the metal parts on his chest, his forearms and his waist, they open up and they reveal these kind of tube-like cylinders coming out of them. And the reason I think he's a cyborg, of some degree anyway, is that the bits that get revealed almost look like muscle, I think. Um, they look kind of organic. Um, and he, he does actually have hands. BG-9 does have hands. Um, which is weird, because why wouldn't Kubo just show him holding them dallying in that case? Because everyone, a lot of people thought BG-9 either didn't have hands or he was telekinetic, because when you see him using his medallion, it's just floating there. So that's kind of weird. Um, he's still got his, his cape, actually, so he looks kind of cool. Um, I can't really decide if he looks cool or not, though. I mean, well, he does. He looks cool, but he looks a bit silly at the same time. Um, but no, he, he does look pretty cool, actually. Um, and he is, he, yeah, he is definitely some kind of robot, at least a robot. Possibly a cyborg, I think. Though he's, He only appears to have one glowing eye, which is really weird. Um, and he, he comments that he was able to ex uh, obtain extremely valuable data from Mukyu Shunko. Um, but he's also disappointed... Because if it's, this is all Soifon can do, then he doesn't even need to use her bank eye against her. Um, and then he unleashes a barrage of missiles, uh, which I believe were the, the cylindric things that were coming out of his chest and arms. Uh, Omeda's like, Captain! And then Soifon jumps out. She's like, do you really think you can kill me with that? You're naive. And she prepares to use what looks like another Shunko attack until BG-9 stabs a tendril straight through her wrist. Now, this is interesting, because BG-9... BG9 comes up right behind her, and he says, As I told you, I was able to obtain extremely valuable data from your Mukyu Shunko. Um, now, what that means, in my opinion, is... Because, obviously, Shunko is Reiatsu coming out of you all the time and being regulated, and BG9 stabs her through the wrist. We already know that Reiatsu is, comes out through the wrist, so does this mean that he's disabled her Reiatsu function? In that arm, anyway, so she can no longer properly use Shunko. I think... I reckon that's what it means. Um... Uh, or even it was those gauntlets that she's now wearing that were doing something because he shattered them a little bit. But, yeah, I think her being stabbed through the wrist is indicative of the Ray Atsu kind of being sealed on that arm, possibly. Um, but when he, when he says he was able to obtain the, the data, I don't know, I, I presume this is done on purpose. You get, like, this line of light come down from his eye, and then he seems to, he seems to detonate and explode. So everyone's like, oh, shit, and then he just blows up in midair. So everyone's not dead. Let me just put that out there. That would never kill someone because <clears throat> you would see them die, especially if it, was, if it was a captain. If it was like a major captain death like Soifon, you'd see her die. So no, she's definitely alive but severely injured, I should think. Um, and we go back to Basby, who says that you were blabbering about my flames being weak. Well, how about I tell you something? Now, this is interesting. This is really interesting. But I think quite a few people might get the wrong idea from what he says here. Um, he brings up the stone ritter who were burned by Yamamoto. Yes, as not still alive. Um, he says that we're, we're all still alive, myself included, uh, which I thought was kind of weird, because obviously he's still alive, he's standing right there. But um, he says it's not because the flames missed them, they all directly hit. Now, yeah, they did. We saw As not get completely roasted, and we saw Basby stand up, and he was pretty damaged. Um, so he says, why do you think we were alive? And he says it's because my flames could offset your captain commanders. A lot of people... Um, correctly speculated that it was because Basby um, did something that kept them alive. Um, 
But obviously he himself was really badly hurt. We saw them stand up. So what does this mean? It does not mean that Basby's fire is stronger than Yamamoto's. It does not mean that. All it means is that Basby's fire is strong enough that Yamamoto's fire no longer can kill them. So that's interesting because it does actually mean that Yama did intend to kill them. Um, if Basby re if Basby basically admits that they had enough power to kill them off if he hadn't done anything, it's um, uh, the best example to use is when Shinji fires a Sero at Grimjo and Grimjo offsets the Sero by firing his own one into it. That's basically what happened. Yamamoto's fire came flying at the Sturmitz as Basby put his own fire into it at the last minute. And because of that, the Sturmitz were only nearly killed instead of basically being killed. So Basby is not stronger than Yamamoto, but he is strong enough to um, withstand Yamamoto's attack to the point of not being killed, basically. Um, and obviously Toshiro is like, oh my god. Um, Basby puts his hand on one of the ice pillars and he is able to basically destroy the entire thing just by standing there. And he says that it's too bad he doesn't have a Bankai because uh, he could have shown Toshiro that only one of his fingers was enough to defeat him if he was using his Bankai. So yeah, Basby's a bit cocky, but he kind of has reason to be, I think. Toshiro flings a wave of ice at Baz, but it, it melts before it even hits him. So I think that Baz is giving off a heated Rayatsu at the moment. <clears throat> he basically says, you won't reach me. Toshiro decides to retreat. That's interesting. Um, I don't know how they thought they were going to get away. Uh, Toshiro says, we must reorganize our formation. I'll block him with my Ryokan Hyoheki. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just pissed that Toshiro has another ability out of absolutely nowhere, even though it doesn't really seem to do him much. Um, Ryohin Hyoheki, I think it is. Basically, what it is, is um, uh, a wall that is weaved of ice. So, fine ice weaves together in front of Toshiro. Um, and, Basby says, an, an ice barrier made by finely weaved ice? That's quite original. But let me tell you, no matter what you do, I only need one finger, as he said already. Pulls up his finger... And he seems to get like these white arrows appear on his finger, and he burn a finger one. And he basically snipes Toshiro through the heart. And that's the end of the chapter. So you see it goes straight through Toshiro's ice barrier and straight through his heart, and now it's back. Now then, I believe the end of this chapter is going to be quite uh, the cause of some contention. What has happened? Is Toshiro even hurt, for starters? Um, obviously, if you remember Fake Karakura Town, he pulled the ice clone stunt. So has he done it again? I'm more inclined to say no. I really don't think Kubo's going for that sort of thing now. Um, I'd be very surprised if Toshiro pulled an Ice Clone stunt. Because if he was going to use the Ice Clone, he wouldn't have needed to put up a barrier in front of him. Um, also, um, Toshiro used his Ice Clone in Bankai last time. Whether that means anything now that he can't use it in Shikai, I don't know. Um, and also, this looks to be possibly the ability that killed Kira, uh, that Basby used to kill Kira. Um, it had a bigger effect on Kira, but that's probably because he's only a lieutenant as opposed to Toshiro being a captain. But yeah, that's the end of the chapter. Bansby appears to have finished Toshiro off with a blast of the heart from Burner Finger 1. Of course, I, I, I am not going to jump to any conclusions. I said that Byaku is dead. I got told. Uh, so yeah, Toshiro is still alive until he is in a casket, in a, in a casket at this rate. Um, Soifan's definitely still alive. But Toshiro has been blasted apparently through the heart. It could be an ice clone. Uh, if it's not an ice clone, then it's likely he has been hit. Um, whether he'll actually be dead, though, I, pff, God knows. Um, really great chapter, though. I'm going to drop a 9 out of 10 on this one. I thought it was fantastic. Um, how long the Basby and BG9 fights are going to go on for, I don't know. I'll leave that for the companion video this week. Um, but my panel of the week... Uh, I think... I mean, there's some great panels. Toshio getting blasted is brilliant for me because I just don't like the character. <laughs> so that's good. But I also really like the panel where, I don't know, where Basby pulling off his cloak because he looks so cool. You get a good look at how he looks underneath it. He looks great. I think he looks really cool. Great design. Um, but yeah, I mean, just a great chapter all around. Uh, BG9 showing off what he looks like underneath his cloak as well. Uh, just really good artwork again from Kubo. It's going to look even better when Nangastream translate it. But yeah, great stuff. Definitely a 9 out of 10. So let me know, what guys, what you thought of this chapter this week. Is Toshiro dead, or is it an ice clone? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think of BG9's true form? Um, what do you think could be under the helmet, if anything, really? Uh, do you think Soifon's dead? Probably not, is she? Do you think Toshiro's dead? That's a better question. Um, and what do you think of Askin versus Miyuri? What are they up to? They definitely seem to be sizing each other up, but uh, it's kind of hard to decipher. So let me know in the comments below, guys. As always, give me a thumbs up to support the video, and subscribe to my videos if you haven't done already. Uh, but apart from that, guys, we'll see you later. See?